Hello everyone. Um, this video is going to be me going through uh, biological treatments for OCD. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, shouldn't take too long this one because I think this is actually quite a simplistic uh, bullet point. We're mainly looking at SSRIs, right? So um, there are a couple of other therapies that are useful to know. We'll just wait for that plane to fly by. Um, so we are going to be coming at this from a biological point of view as per the last video. You right there, Bell? Honestly. Um, <clears throat> we looked at biological theories, so now we're going to be looking at how those theories have created a lot of biological treatments and the pros and the cons of those, right? So um, the biological approach is arguably the main way doctors will try to treat OCD and depression and anxiety. They'll just throw loads of drugs at you, which won't actually fix the problem. Um, but we're gonna be looking at how they work. So um, and it, this sounds a bit weird actually, but antidepressants are used to treat OCD, right? But OCD is not depression. Your guess is as good as mine, right? Um, antidepressants are used because they do seem to be quite effective. Uh, and the particular branch that we're going to be looking at here is what are called SSRIs, known as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. What they do is in the name. They selectively inhibit the reuptake of serotonin. They stop the uptake of uh, serotonin and we know from the last issue with this with the last video with the search gene that is what the issue is is uh, the serotonin gets released into the synapse before it gets a chance to cross the synapse it then gets pulled up again and that leads to OCD on some level so this is taken through tablets you can get them in other ways and typically if you suffer from OCD or you're newly suffering from OCD, uh, you're going to be started on the lowest dose, and this is known as a stepwise approach. They will basically uh, give you that drug at the lowest dose. They won't give you a massively high dose to begin with. It's the same sort of thing with depression, really. And then they will react to what your symptoms do on that lowest dose. So if your symptoms aren't going, then they will raise you a little bit, right? So they don't whack you on the highest dose straight away. It doesn't make any sense to be able to do so. So one thing I do just want to make a mention of here is that the the common misconception that students have is SSRIs give you more serotonin, but they don't. They make the serotonin you already have work in the way it's supposed to. All they do is they sit in the reuptake site. This is the drug, this little thing here these are the drugs this is the drug this is the drug all they do is they block that reuptake they do not give you serotonin they do not increase your levels they increase your activity of serotonin now the reason why i'm placing so much emphasis on this is because if you say ssris give you more serotonin technically you are wrong they don't they just make the serotonin you have work in a much more efficient way so that's a really important thing to note down. Um, there are loads of SSRIs though. There are loads of different types. There are loads of um, antidepressants. So on the left-hand side, you've got the drug name as well as the brand name just here. So a lot of you know about Prozac. Prozac is what you, you can buy, but actually the drug is called fluoxetine. The other common one, it's not on there, sertraline. So, uh, sertraline and flu... Oh, sertraline is there. Mm How -hmm. do I miss that? Uh, sertraline and fluoxetine are what most teenagers are put on for depression. Um, but they do tend to work for OCD quite a lot. They do take quite a while to... Um, they do take quite a while to, to start working, but significantly shorter than counselling. So, SSRIs should work between two and four weeks. If you don't have any symptom improvement after four to six weeks, you're encouraged to go back to your doctor and say, look, it's not working, 
can you increase the dose? And they will look to do it because everybody's biology requires very, very different doses. So I can't just throw 500 mil at everybody and it fix everybody. Um, there's loads of factors that need to be taken into account. So with drugs, as I say, loads of factors, side effects, the half-life of the drug and the effectiveness of the therapy do need to be taken into account. I'm going to be going through all, th all three of those. Now, these are not necessarily going to be labeled in your in your pack, but I definitely want you noting them down, both for AO1, but also for AO3 as well. So let's start with side effects, of which there are quite a few common side effects. Now, as I go through these side effects, I do want you just to think, would you rather have OCD? If you had some of these, and I'm, I'm just gonna pick some random ones out, would you rather have that, or with the side effects, or would you rather think, no, I don't wanna take the drugs anymore, I'd stick with OCD, thank you very much. So what you're doing there is you're doing what will be called a cost-benefit analysis. Is it worth it? So let's just have a look at some of these common side effects. Some are worse than others, um, and common is classified as one in 10 people. Um, that's quite low. That is quite low, actually, when you think about it. One in 10 people. Personally, I don't believe the one in 10 thing. I think drug companies know that it's way more than one in 10, but that's... That's another thing for another day. Let's have a look. So common side effects of SSRIs include feeling agitated, shaky or anxious. So it's, it's affecting you emotionally. Feeling or being sick, indigestion, diarrhea or constipation. Hmm, both ways, that's quite fun. Loss of appetite or weight loss, dizziness, blurred vision, dry mouth, excessive sweating, excessive sweating, uh, sleeping problems headaches, and then there's loads of sex ones down the bottom, which I'm not even going to dignify by talking about, right? So let's let's just pick, would you rather have OCD and not take the drugs? Or would you rather have, let's just pick, I'm going to pick four. Let's pick four. Uh, feeling nauseated, diarrhea, dizziness, and excessive, excessive sweating. Would you rather have OCD or nausea, indigestion, diarrhea, and excessive sweating. I think I've just did different ones there. Um, I genuinely think some of you would rather stick with OCD, and especially. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna get down here. But if I if I were to uh, talk about some of those, some of you might be like, "No, I'd rather OCD." Thank you very much. It gets worse. So these are the common side effects. They're not too bad, but together they may actually be quite annoying. And just keep in mind, by the way, if you, let's say you, you take these drugs and you get um, diarrhea, all right? In order to treat that diarrhea, you then also need to have other drugs, which also have side effects. So you can create what's called a cocktail, a cocktail, a cocktail of medication um, by taking drugs to fix the side effects already. So there are major issues. The, the less common side effects are these ones. And this is, these are pretty serious. These are like need to go to hospital serious. So bruising or bleeding easily, including vomiting blood or bleeding from your bum, which is rarely a good sign. Confusion, that by itself is quite a lot, by the way, and not just your usual run-of-the-mill teenager confusion. This is, you don't know where you are, you know, you're, you're walking around, you're in a fugue state. Movement problems such as stiffness or shaking, hallucinating, and being unable to pee. That really winds me up that that is on the NHS website. That really irritates me. That's such an unprofessional urinate. Just write urinate, don't write pee, we're not five years old. So again, would you rather have OCD or would you rather uh, take a chance and have these symptoms? Now, again, I don't buy this. One in a thousand, I, I, I don't buy that personally. Um, now, you, with this, by the way, you can talk about this in your AO1, but you can also evaluate the drug therapy by talking about, yes, it may be effective, but if you have side effects that are going to force you to stop taking the drug, who cares if it's effective? It doesn't matter if it's effective if you are going to stop taking the drug. So you ideally want it to be effective and have no side effects, but we don't live in an ideal world. 
The other thing to think about here is what this, the half-life of a drug is. Now, for those of you who don't do chemistry or biology and maybe don't know what a half-life is, a half-life is essentially how, um, how quickly half of the drug will leave your system. Now, if I take paracetamol, the half-life of that paracetamol is four hours, which means after four hours, half the drug has been weed out, excreted, or gone. That's not, and this is a really important point I'm about to say, that doesn't mean that the second half of the drug takes another four hours. What happens is half the drug leaves after four hours, but the second drug breaks down pretty quickly after that. So all of your, um, all of the paracetamol is out of your system within about four and a half, five hours, which is why you have to take paracetamol every four hours. Your headache comes back after four hours because the drug is now mostly out of your system. Now, SSRIs, um, the half-life of, say, sertraline is about, on average, depends on a few things, but it's about 26 hours, which means you take the sertraline and after... 26 hours, half of the sertraline is out of your body. By 30 hours, the rest of the sertraline will, will be out, definitely. <clears throat> Meaning you have to take the drug once a day in order to keep the levels up high enough so that you are actually being treated. Remember, the drug only works for as long as it is in the system. If the drug leaves your system after 28 hours, 30 hours, you're going to have to take the drug every day. And what I would do here, by the way, is I would compare drug therapy to counselling. Drug therapies have half-lives, i.e. they have a limited amount of time in which the drug will work, e.g. when it's in your system. Counselling does not. Counselling is much, much more permanent. So a good comparison point that I would want you to use is comparing the fact of SSRIs are shit because they have a half-life of only 26 hours, whereas counselling does not have a half-life, does not have as many side effects. There are side effects to counselling, by the way. Um, finally, does it work? <laughs> The short answer is yes, it does work. The longer answer is yes, it works better than a placebo, but not that much greater than a placebo. It does work, but you're not curing 50% of OCD patients with SSRIs. You, you're no way treating 100% of people. They are more effective, but there are serious side effects, which does make, which do make you think if the effectiveness rate is good, but not high, and you have serious side effects, is it worth doing? So Pigot and Say in 1999, there's a lot of more recent pieces of research as well that you can just type effectiveness of SSRIs on OCD into Google. Um, they did a big meta-analysis and found that, yes, they are consistent um, and they are effective in treating OCD symptoms, but they do have serious side effects. Cicerone brought in dopamine, but I'm not going to go into that. You can use it if you wish, but I'm not too bothered about it. Now, <clears throat> SSRIs are not actually named on the spec. And I personally don't think there's enough for you to answer a 16 marker with what we've gone through so far. You could talk about effectiveness, you could talk about half-life, you could talk about side effects. But I do want to arm you with a few other drugs that are also used. And these have come up in the mark scheme before. So that you want to talk about SSRIs, but you also want to talk about benzos, benzodiazepines. This is, I always find quite strange. SSRIs are the main route and they're antidepressant. Benzos or benzodiazepines are anti-anxiety drugs but they also do appear to have an effect, mainly to calm the patient down. What's the problem of OCD? Their brain, it just, it's almost like it's on fire, but that could happen, but that could happen, but that could happen, but that could, right? So they spend a lot of their time ruminating in their head, OCD sufferers. It's really tricky to get out of your head as well. It's, you, you, the thoughts, they just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. So benzos tackle that. 
they calm the brain down. Um, I've got a little bit here. Um, yeah, we've already used that. Starkovic, 38.4% of an, their OCD sample had been prescribed benzos. 96 took them alongside SSRIs. So as you can see, SSRIs are the primary route, but often you will also be asked to take benzos, which have their own side effects, by the way. They're anti-anxiety drugs. They have their own side effects. So they're not the primary route a lot of the time. Um, Postwick did argue against it, but I just want to show you this. On the left-hand side are a few bits about how benzos work. Benzos try to calm down the obsessions, and they do that, but if you have a look here, by enhancing GABA, gamma, gamma amino butyric acid. GABA is a... I may have covered this before already, but it's a hormone that basically calms the brain down. People with anxiety do not have that much GABA because their brain is constant the whole time and, and they don't have that, that neurotransmitter to be able to kill some of the messages, to be able to calm the brain down. If you can't sleep at night and you're tossing and turning because you've got a lot on your brain, you probably don't have that much GABA in your system at that point. You're thinking quite a lot. You're not coming down. So... GABA is used to calm the obsessions down. Again, doesn't treat OCD, doesn't tackle the root cause, is only effective for as long as it is in the system. Um, I do just want to see my internet's probably not working because it's doing my head in, but if we type in half life of uh, benzodiazepines, we're going to get something. <sighs> And the after short acting ones. There you go. So uh, intermediate acting have an average elimination half-life of 12 to 24 hours. If you go in the middle of that, that's about 24 hours. So again, benzos you would take once a day and you'll take it alongside your, um, your SSRI. Now, there's a lot of evaluations, most of which we covered already, to be perfectly honest with you. But the first one, clearly, drugs do not actually fix the OCD. They get nowhere near tackling the OCD. They merely mask the symptoms. So you could argue evaluatively that drugs are effective at masking the symptoms, but in tackling the root cause, they get nowhere near it. There are obviously a lot of side effects. Why is that a problem? How are you going to elaborate on that? Well, if there are a lot of side effects, people are going to discontinue their, med their medicine regime because they're going to think it's not worth it. Um, yeah, a couple of ones. Good news, I guess, is medication generally is quite cheap when compared to counselling. Always look to compare if you can. Um, they are generally quite cheap. The issue, though, is, as we said, uh, as I said in the last video, if 25% of boys who get OCD get it before the age of 10, how can you treat that? An eight-year-old is not going to be able to go to counselling, or certainly not all eight-year-olds are not going to understand what is happening to them. They're not going to want to go to counselling at all. So the best way to treat these children, presumably, is to drug the children. But then we get into a whole ethical issue here is, is it morally okay to drug your children with antidepressants and anti-anxiety drugs? Yes, you are trying to care for them, but at the end of the day, you are still drugging kids with harmful uh, medication. So there is an ethical issue there as well. There is appeal here, which I've I've come from this from an economic point of view. So I am going to go through this appeal. I don't always, but it, I think these points are quite important. Any of the treatments we look at, whether flooding, systematic desensitization, um, CBT, drug therapy, all the stuff we do in the second year, for example, a good argument here is an economic one. They help the economy. As it says here, it could be argued that drug treatments of OCD are cost effective for the economy. That's your point. It's short, it's sharp, it's to the point. Let's get some evidence here. And I found this myself. 
uh, Held, Stedman and Davis et al. found that the, uh, quite recently, the daily dose of SSRIs costs 2p. So that's the research they did, economic research. It costs 2p per person per dose. Yet the tax opportunities you get from these people are phenomenal. So if you're looking at, let's say, a month, 30 days, that is 60 pence, right? Because 30 times 2p is 60 pence. Yet if that drug is keeping people in work, think about how much tax you're going to get back from that person. So for example, and I didn't mean to do this, but let's just let's just go on uh, averages. I've got a tax calculator here. Um, actually, let's see if we can get a, an easy one. Um, yes, I accept, I accept everything. Um, the average UK earning is 30,000 pounds. So let's just go average, right? Um, yes, 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 fine. Yeah, I'm not blind. Calculate. Average person earns 30 grand. It means they take home 24 grand. Uh, they'll pay three. Look at that. They'll pay 3,400 pound in tax a year and 2,400 pound in national insurance. Yeah, it only costs you 2p a day. 2p a day to keep that person in work. Um, I do believe there will be a breakdown here. So if we're looking for the month, they are paying, where's tax, get out my way. They pay, keep in mind, it costs you 60p to drug the individual. Yet they went away and they worked and they paid almost 300 pound in tax and 200 pound in national insurance. That's 500 pound for 60 pence worth of medication, if it works. So there is a clear economic argument for doing this. It can reduce unemployment, it can raise a lot of taxes, it can, so you do need to know the economic argument. That is where I am gonna leave it. This last point is a very good point to know though, so you, you probably do wanna know some of these facts, some of these figures. Peace out.